Well, apologies in advance. I had, um, I realized a second segment of this was recorded uh, vertically, so it'll switch midway through. However, welcome to Chicken with Nuggets. We're trying uh, first thing with uh, TVP. Oh, <laughs> dog back there is being a weirdo. Um, yeah, I haven't done anything with TVP before. Textured vegetable protein, and um, it's interesting. I'll, I'll I'll be interested to see how it turns out after it's been fin it's finished cooking and all that. Um, I ended up with Anthony's TVP. It you know doesn't seem like there's any real hierarchy of it, but it seems decent. And so we start with three cups of textured vegetable protein, two and five eighths cup vegetable broth. I used some stock that I'd made earlier this week. Three tablespoons garlic powder, three teaspoons onion powder, six tablespoons nutritional yeast, three tablespoons Worcester sauce or soy sauce, whichever you happen to have, uh, one and a half cup flour divided, one and a half cup unsweetened plant milk, one and a half cup breadcrumbs, salt and pepper to taste. So you start with the broth, boil the broth, and then <clears throat> rehydrate the TVP granules. That's uh, it's about 10 minutes at the beginning. The you add the spices and the nutritional yeast in the Worcester sauce after it's been rehydrated. And then it's important, <laughs> important to add the quarter cup at least of flour. I think I added maybe three quarters by the time I got it to the right consistency because you need it to, um, you know, stick to itself enough to make the nuggets, and it doesn't do that on its own. Uh, it does, unfortunately, make it not gluten-free, because if you get the TVP that's gluten-free, then you're not, you, you, you're, you're starting gluten-free and then going gluten-y. Uh, so that is something to consider. You might be able to get the same effect with like uh, maybe arrowroot starch or something or um, an eggless binder like a flax seed in any case I I don't know I didn't mess around with that because I can do flour so uh, maybe in a future video in any case you make the nuggets uh, into little nuggety shapes I'd like to experiment with that a little bit more in the future. I think that there's a better way to do it than to make each nugget individually. I could probably get it to the right consistency, roll it out, and then like cut them into the right shapes. Could do dino nuggets or, you know, whatever shape is fun for you. In any case, whatever it is has to stay together when it goes into the batter and then it goes into the breadcrumbs. Um, the batter, I messed around with it a little bit. I used the batter for the my favorite crispy baked cauliflower bites, which called for a quarter cup of flour and, no, sorry, half a cup of flour and a half a cup of arrowroot starch. Um, and then, a, oh, it said a half cup of non-dairy milk. I think... So I got it to the right consistency. Again, I don't always follow the recipe. I think I had maybe three quarters cup of flour and a cup of water because I'm trying to save my almond milk for coffee. Because I don't get paid till the 15th and that's my last thing of milk. In any case, um... The whole point of this, and I forget if I say this later, because I filmed the second part first, so, you know, you get what you get. Uh, the point of this is that I want something for lunch this week that I don't have to think about, and oh, I do talk about this later, 
But in any case, making a bunch of nuggets so I can pack them for lunch and have something I don't have to think too hard about for, for meals. And, um, yeah, I think I, I've explained up to the parts that comes next. And again, apologies in advance for the, uh, <laughs> vertical segment of the film, but that's kind of just how I had to set up the camera. Uh, so that you could see how it goes, because I, I don't have a tripod or anything. So it was up sitting in a shelf. Uh, right there. Well, inside the cabinet. But yeah, I'm going to pause here and let myself take it in a couple minutes. So I learned this technique, I don't remember what it's called, a long time ago, a friend of mine named Chris, um, we used it for actually making little pats of um, butter or whipped cream or something for a, a meal that we were both working on. And um, <clears throat> it's great for when you need to make a bunch of little similarly shaped things, but you don't want to get your hands messy. You just need two spoons and some patience. And to not mind the sound they make when you uh, slide them together. But anyway, the uh, little nuggets go in the batter, they go in the breadcrumbs, they go on the tray. And so today I wanted something, something, um, Something for the week, actually, so that I could just not have to think about packing my lunch this week, since this is our our first week back with students part time. Um, and what does that mean? Well, that means that on Monday and Tuesday, well, not this Monday, because. We are still on break. The high school students that are starting back will start back. And the middle school students, all of them, are remote. And <clears throat> Wednesday we are asynchronous. And then Thursday and Friday I will have my first handful of students in the building and what that looks like for me is about two, two per class which is fine uh, because well, I guess I mean it is what it is I don't have any say in it but I think it might be easier to try and figure out the logistics when I only have to manage two people in person, but we'll see. I am hopeful that the relationships we have established digitally translate to successful in-person teaching, but we shall see. The recipe said it makes about 30. I'd say that is darn accurate with the size of nugget that is happening here. Um, Yeah, 
just make the nugget. You really just you want it you want it pressed enough that it's not gonna fall apart <laughs> in the batter, which is uh, what happened with these three, my first testers. Um, the recipe said to put flour in with the TVP mixture after it had um, rehydrated. And I hadn't done enough, I guess. So these are the more successful. Six, eight, nine, ten. Okay, more successful cousins of it. Looks like I might actually get a little bit more than two, four, six, eight, ten, two, four, six, eight, ten. Okay, I will get slightly more, which is great because. I want to eat some today. <laughs> mm, okay. Yeah, I am. Oh, it's falling apart. It's falling apart. Oh no. I am getting tired. I can tell. It is one of those days where I didn't do a lot physically, but I did a lot of thinking. And that can be just as exhausting. Uh, let's see, I could probably get a few more along there. Let's see. Because, uh, nah, I'm not going to waste this. This is, this is good stuff. So yeah, these are, these are going to be little nuggets. And I am excited for them. Although I tried <laughs> tried this new hot sauce I got today on something else, on some stir fry. Ooh, a little dabble do ya. It's um it's a it's a bit much. <laughs> it's a bit much. Like, it's the kind of hot sauce that, yes, there's flavor there, but you you don't notice because of the pain. Like, it is actually a painful hot sauce. Um, <clears throat> and the reason I have that hot sauce, I wouldn't, I mean, I like heat, but not for the sake of heat. I ended up with it because I succumbed to some excellent marketing the first we feast folks and the uh, the uh, what what would the word be the instigators of hot ones have a subscription box for hot sauce I'm like hmm, I like hot sauce I'd be interested and I have been interested in trying some of the ones that they have on the show, hot ones. Sure, I'll I'll bite. Cause I was low. I didn't have an. I don't have very many hot sauces at that point. I don't know that I will try to find another box of theirs anytime terribly soon. Uh, because I am a wash in hot sauce. I realized I actually did have more than I thought I did. But they sent me three new tasty ones Let's get that off. the the eye of the scorpion the uh, smoke and Ed's picnic sauce which is a little bit more garlicky and but still hot definitely had like it's a ghost pepper based one this one is a scorpion pepper based one. And then this is probably my favorite, as you can tell, because it's almost gone. The Cosmic Dumpling Far Out Hot Sauce. It is delicious. It is sweet, a little smoky, um, garlicky. It is wonderful on anything with a soy or a sesame base to it. Um, I had it with my stir fry the other night. It was very good. 
and um, yeah, of the three, that is the one that I'm most likely to purchase independently. And uh, I don't know, I think that uh, Eye of the Scorpion might actually be <laughs> a lifetime supply. I know it's only a little bottle, but I think it might be a lifetime supply. Anyway, uh, oh good, we're getting down to the end here, I think. Maybe two more. Two more, yeah. Perfect. Oh, and it all fits on one tray, which is great. Assuming I can manage this. Future recipe. Uh, you do not need quite that much of the batter. And I'll make. I'll, already heard my spiel about how I made that. Um, doing a little as you go with the breadcrumbs is a good call. Because then you can make sure that, I mean, it's more than will fit in the standard cereal bowl, let's say that. And then you can also make sure that you're covering the whole thing. We'll hope it stays together. Alright. And down she goes. Okay. So these are going to go in the oven for 20 minutes at 400 degrees and uh, oh you s did it keep going? I think it kept going in any case sorry low battery message uh, these like I said 400 for 20 minutes and see when they come out. All right here they are out of the oven nice and golden brown, although the lighting doesn't really show that very well. Sort of see it on the tops of the breading. But yeah, a bunch of these will make up my lunch this week. And I think, I mean, they're still too hot to try, but... Alright, hold on. Alright. We're gonna try one it's still kind of hot, but not too hot that I can't pick it up. I'll try one with the, the ranch here. Alright. They're not super dense. I'm alright with that. The crisp is nice. Kind of chewy. I think that's going to be with anything you make with TPP. A little chewy. Mm. No, because we're going to do this right. And then we need this guy. Need this one. other ones, but it is Frank's, and I put that on everything, so here we go. I 
I mean, I mean, that is, that is gonna do the trick. It's gonna do the trick. I think, I'm wondering, actually, this is, this is gonna be a good test of it. So this one's a little skinnier. The other one, the one that I just tried was kind of a bit chunkier. So let's see if the skinnier one cooked out a bit. Mm. Yeah, I think these are the thinner ones are going to be more like traditional chicken nuggets. Um, but yeah, um, trying to see the inside there. Some particles. Not bad. <sighs> kind of fussy. Kind of worth it. If you are in the mood for chicken nuggets. Definitely scratches that itch. Um, I just had a thought. If you wanted something like fish sticks. You could put a little bit of, um, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm reusing a bag. So you could put a little bit of nori, the seaweed, like the sushi wrapper seaweed in it, make it a little, little fishy. So, uh, that could be that could be an interesting variation. In any case, I'm going to pack up some of this so that I don't have to think about lunch for the week. And I will... Oh, right. I never did figure out a catchphrase. I don't think I need one. Anyway, I'm going to put this stuff away. And uh, thank you for cooking with me for a bit. And not minding my depression kitchen, which is about a week's worth of crap, but you still gotta eat, so just make more dishes. They'll get done eventually. <laughs>